Good afternoon again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is Carlo Motta from the European Stings booth at the EBS European Business Summit 2014. I am very pleased to welcome President Hannes Swoboda, President of so Socialists and Democrats of the um, uh, Parliament, um, European Parliament. So, uh, Mr. President, I would like to start with a uh, research released on the 2nd of May by Eurostat. I will briefly give you a couple of details and then formulate my question. According to this um, study, the euro area seasonally adjusted employment rate, unemployment rate, sorry, was 11.8% um, in March 2014. Um, so this means 25.7 million men and women in the EU28, of whom 18.9 million were in the euro area, unemployed people in March 2014. Uh, so we have some uh, interesting numbers like Greece, 26.7%, Spain, 25.3% unemployed people against 4.9% of Austria, 5.1% Germany, 6 in Luxembourg, with the unemployment rate of 22.8%. What are the plans and the proposals of the S&D group to help European new generations get back to life, we would say? Well, uh, first of all, we need a uh, better economic policy, a policy which is uh, uh, giving incentives to investment, because investment is the key of uh, creating new jobs. Maybe investment in existing companies, maybe new companies, startups. Secondly, of course, promote education and training, because we need uh, well-qualified young people. But of course, uh, the qualified people then have to find those the jobs, which. Uh, uh, more or less in, in uh, harmony with their qualification or the qualification with the harmony uh, with the job uh, available. Um, and uh, of course uh, for that uh, we need not only more uh, uh, education and training, we need less bureaucracy to give incentives for new startups. There are a lot of things uh, have to be done. From macroeconomic policy, there was a public investment plays a bigger role because public investment was going down, but also private investment, and of course we need banks to give credits. Therefore, the, <coughs> sorry, the banking union, the uh, safety net uh, created for banks is very important, and banks now should give more credits, especially to small and medium-sized industries. Thank you. What is your opinion, Mr. President, about the fierce austerity policies, policies of the past years in Europe. Um, do you believe it was the only road to take to face crisis? And what's the so Socialist and Democrats' resolution for economic recovery in Europe to return to su sustainable growth? Austerity was not the alternative. Now, uh, reforms are without alternative. Reforms are necessary, especially in the countries you mentioned with a very high unemployment. Of course, reforms were necessary, but Australia, in the sense of cutting down too strongly and too quickly, was creating even more unemployment. And therefore, uh, we always proposed a longer term uh, perspective of doing reforms, of cutting, of course, spending which is not necessary, redirecting spending towards investment, education, and training, and to have a, a cut in the deficit and in the debt which in the long run, of course, is necessary, combined with less unemployment and more uh, future for the younger generation. So I think um, we proposed a lot of uh, alternatives in our progressive economy proposals. Uh, partly they have been uh, respected or accepted in the last years, but uh, we have still a long way to go to be well, positive, to give the younger generation a positive sign of uh, there is a chance for you, there's a possibility, creating new mobility devices and possibilities also in Europe. So there are many, many things which still have to be done uh, beyond the simplistic austerity policies of the past years. What do people expect from S&D group nowadays, in your opinion? I mean. Um, and also, what do you expect the election outcome to be for S and D for the Socialists and Democrats at the European election next week? And what new could your party bring to that new parliament? 
Well, first of all, of course, we hope to gain further additional seats in these elections. Um, it is not easy because if you fight for an alternative, uh, uh, there are other people who also fight for alternative, but uh, with very simplistic and primitive uh, remedies and conceptions, like the extremists on the left, or especially the extremists on the right. So we are in a competition with all those who say the present policies are not uh, okay. Uh, therefore, um, we will see how the result will be. Secondly, of course, uh, we started uh, two very, very important uh, initiatives. The one is a progressive economy and the other is uh, Jobs for Europe program where we go also more into details. And jobs, creating new jobs, promoting new industries uh, is very important, especially industrial policy. In Europe has been neglected very often. Competition policy alone is not enough. We need industrial policy for Europe to be competitive. Uh, globally, we need uh, international trade agreements which are respecting our uh, peculiarities, our sensitivities, but nevertheless open new ways uh, for trade. So there's a lot to do and I think socialists have a pragmatic uh, attitude towards these issues. We are no lunatics and no uh, opponents against, for example, trade, but it should be of course in harmony with our special interest as Europeans. Thank you for this. Um, this is very good to introduce my next question. You said, Mr. President, you talked about trade. We had an interesting discussion with Mr. Um, Tim Bennett, which is the uh, CEO for the Transatlantic Business Council. And we had, um, as I said, an interesting chat with this gentleman about TTIP. Um, well, there are major obstacles on the way to an agreement. This is no secret. We discussed about data privacy and GMOs, which are very, very, very important thing uh, mm, for our uh, citizens in the EU and the future electors. We would like to hear from, uh, from you, hear your opinion on the compromises that a, the European citizens should or should not take in order for the EU to benefit from a very huge, gigantic trade agreement like this? Well, I always said uh, also to the Americans, be pragmatic, go step by step, don't think you can do it in uh, uh, one year, and be very open-minded and transparent. Unfortunately, in some of the governments now who complain uh, about uh, secrecy, we're not helping in making the mandate very public. The mandate should be very public, uh, officially. Uh, we should be a sincere discussion with the citizens. Now, on the acceptance, I think there are many ways to deal with the issue. The issue is, for example, information. If people have enough information, even if goods they don't like, but it's clear they are informed where they come from, how they are treated, if they are including GMOs, it's, it's a different thing. Then people who don't mind can consume it. People who do mind can say, no, I don't want this kind of product. So I think we should not be ideological on this issue. Uh, on data protection, yes, here we need rules. The European Parliament, uh, since uh, months already, has a concept on, on the basis of the proposal of the Commission. We made our legislative work. The Council is uh, not coming to the table to negotiate. It's up to the government. They always said, I don't want to have a trade agreement with the U.S. without sufficient data protection. We can do it. The Council has to come and we can negotiate as we do on other legislative acts and then we have it. But uh, it's very hypocritical of some of the Council members, some of the governments who speak loud about data protection but don't come to the table, who speak loud about transparency but are not ready to publicize the mandate for TTIP and that endangers this important project we have with the United States of America. Thank you. Um, we'd like to get back to the elections for my last question. Um, we recently released a, a story, an article on our newspaper, on the European Sting, about the alleged lack of interest of the European voters about these uh, uh, elections. This upcoming elections. Um, without getting again on numbers, I can tell you that a lot of people, especially in, in countries like um, Italy or France, um, consider their economy damaged 
by the EU in the last few years. What's the problem behind this? It's just communication. Or is there an actual problem of, uh, from the EU to, to help its citizens? Well, probably both. Look, uh, many politicians, if there are neg negative things, they say they come from Brussels. If it's positive, it's coming from there. Uh, let me take the two examples you mentioned. In France, reforms are necessary. Uh, and, uh, of course, not only reforms for France, but of the European policy. And much more should have been done already to, from, the, from the side of France to put pressure on the rest of Europe to do what I said before, a policy beyond uh, mere austerity and to, of course, the internal reforms. Italy, if you look at the difference between the North and South, even there is a big gap. It's not only in Europe, but uh, the situation in Milano and the situation in, uh, in Calabria is totally different. Uh, and therefore, I think if a country cannot uh, succeed in bridging the gap inside its own country, how can it be that Europe can help? So I think we need a better cooperation and readiness of national governments to use Europe as, an inst as a positive instrument and not only uh, complain if things go wrong, that again it was Brussels. Okay, that's an interesting point of view, but I think that also when all those countries entered the EU, we and they already know about the differences and the breaks in between the, those markets. So it's not something actually new or which is, which is happening now. It's a very long coming problem. But this is my argument that uh, Europe uh, helped with a lot of money, but it was not used always in a very sufficient way uh, to build up the infrastructure or in industrial reforms or to build, for example, also the tourism. I was recently in Calabria, I saw the potentiality of the region, but not enough has been done. Maybe not enough for Europe, but also not enough from, from Italy itself. So I think uh, that is very important that the countries don't only put the blame on Europe, but do their job. And they didn't do their job in the past in many, many cases. We do think that collaboration is always uh, fun, very, very important. So I thank you again, Mr. Hans Soboda, for being with us today. And it was a pleasure. And thank you all for the attention.